Good morning. Welcome to this service of morning prayer for July 5th. My name is Susan Drain. I am a lay reader in this Cathedral Church of All Saints in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Be still and aware of the presence of God within and all around. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for this day and for this time when we can turn our thoughts from busyness and responsibility to your light and your peace. We thank you for all your gifts, for your creation around us, for the abundance of your provision for us, for friends and loved ones, and for both the blessings and the challenges that enrich our lives. We thank you for your Son, who showed us just how great and steadfast is the love in which you hold us all. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own Son, but gave him up for all of us, how will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is, who is to condemn? It is Christ who died, or rather who was raised, who is also at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will affliction, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all these things we are more than victorious through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here ends the lesson. What then are we to say about these things? Begins the reading. What are these things to which Paul refers? They are the sufferings of the present time, sufferings that he and the Roman Christians saw everywhere around them. The whole creation is groaning, he says, as if laboring to bring forth a long-delayed new creation and new life. Two thousand years on, we look around at the sufferings of our own time, and wonder what is being birthed from the convulsions of our stricken planet and the agonies of people at war. It must be a rough beast indeed that is slouching toward Bethlehem. But it is in precisely this sort of context that Paul's words resonate. If affliction or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword are not enough, who or what can separate us? from the love of Christ and the hope that lies in that love. I have heard Paul's ringing answer to that question many times in recent weeks, for it is, and rightly so, a favorite reading at funerals, of which there have been too many recently. In grief and loss, these words remind us to entrust our friend, our beloved, into a cosmos of unconquerable love and know ourselves held there with them in the same invincible, almost unimaginable love. It is a place of calm in the midst of grief, of comfort in a time of if only or what if or what now. A still point in a turbulent, turning world, the recognition that nothing, nothing at all, 
comes between us and the God who made and cherishes us. May it be so. Before we turn to the tasks of the day, let us pray for ourselves and for one another. Give us strength for this day. Give us joy in this day. Comfort those who suffer and those who mourn. Send us wherever we are needed and sustain us on our way. Help us live out the love from which we can never be exiled. And we pray together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.